The Raspberry Pi Zero is a small computer you can do anything with, so it seems like it'd be great for developing hardware projects and connected devices for the Internet of Things. But prototyping with the Zero can be hard to do. There are often tricky wires, tight soldering, and confusing data sheets involved in actually building your idea. And that can make the process of building Internet of Things devices with the Raspberry Pi Zero frustrating, expensive, and harder than it should be. So, allow us to introduce the Grove Pi Zero. The Grove Pi Zero simplifies all of this. There are no more jumpers, no more breadboards, no more soldering to bring your Internet of Things design to life. You simply snap your sensors into the Grove Pi Zero board, fire up your Raspberry Pi Zero, and go. You can use the hundreds of sensors offered in the Grove sensor family, everything from sensors for distance, light, temperature, and humidity, to buttons and displays. There are literally hundreds of electronic modules for your projects. Assembly is easy. To add a new sensor or module to the Grove Pi Zero, simply snap one into place in the Grove Pi Zero board. Just like that, it's ready to use. Adding a module like this takes seconds. And while it's easy to work with, Grove Pi Zero still maintains a highly compact form factor, keeping your design small and space efficient. The board fits neatly over the Raspberry Pi Zero itself. Once you have the board assembled and your sensors in place, a rich open source collection of programming examples and libraries make it easy to connect your sensors and start interacting with the physical world. The Grove Pi Zero supports a number of different programming options. Our community developed software library has programming examples for most Grove sensors in Python, C, Java, and Scratch. Our examples and libraries are all clearly documented, so they're easy to understand and use. The Grove Pi Zero makes Raspberry Pi hardware truly plug and play and enables fast, easy prototyping. The powerful little Raspberry Pi Zero is just waiting for you to release your maker creativity and build the projects you are passionate about. And with the Grove Pi Zero, you're just minutes away from starting your next great connected device project. Hi, my name is Olivier. I'm an interaction designer and I'm also an electrical engineer. And I've been a hacker forever. And today, I'm super excited to share with you the Airboard, this awesome prototyping board that I designed for makers like you and me. The Airboard is an all-in-one, thumb-sized Arduino-compatible microcontroller designed for ultra-fast prototyping. The Airboard makes it super easy to learn programmable electronics. No breadboards, no wires, no bulky batteries, and no specific connectors. This is the most standard, open and cheapest way to experiment with a whole library of interactions in just minutes. The Airboard is wireless friendly. It is compatible with all certified Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and XB shields on the market and is also ready for upcoming wireless radios. You can control it from your smartphone or directly connect it to the web. It's your choice. Just pick up the wireless shield that best suits your application and you're ready to go. The best thing is that it allows over-the-air programming of your regular Arduino sketches in all of the three modes. No need for a reset button. The Airboard is a great tool for creativity workshops. It allows you to build many interactions in a really short time and to build your ideas really quickly. After many prototypes and two years of user testing, the Airboard is now ready for production. We partner with the top European manufacturer in our beautiful French Alps, close to the Italian border. We just received our pre-production prototypes today and they are just awesome. So if you've got great ideas, the Airboard will allow you to transform those ideas into realities fast. Elemental Path is really ambitious. We want to change the way kids learn by improving the way they play. To do that, we're creating an internet-connected smart toy. It started with the IBM Watson competition and understanding what was the best way to use the platform. We noticed a really big gap in the way toys engage with children. It should go out to you and play, not just respond to you. And all the pieces just started kind of coming together. Like, this is what it's going to sound like. This is what it's going to say. We were chasing the product. It, it kind of told us where to go. For us, it's all about keeping children engaged with the technology because that's where the benefit comes from. Smart toys, as the current generation goes, they're not very smart. 
They'll present your child with information and you hope that something sticks. Cognitories gives that personalized, customized experience to the child. We're bringing another level to it. We're either really onto something or that we're just absolutely crazy. But the dinosaur is really a companion. It doesn't go away when a parent takes their tablet or smartphone with them. A toy is really for the child. Having a toy that can hold intelligent conversations about the surrounding and also understand a child's personality preferences and then blend in uh, learning exercises, exactly what makes this so powerful. Cognitories can actually uh, assess where the child is and give them age-appropriate content based on that child. There's a very different engagement for a child that's four with a Cognitoy uh, than a child that's seven. It's fun. It's not fun. There's not a child that's going to play with it or work with it. And this is fun, where the child can respond back to it as a friend. Eventually, the, uh, the toy will continue to develop this uh, capacity to reason about the, the child's life and it's constantly evolving, it's constantly iterating. If we find that kids are playing with this toy in a certain way, we can move with them. We have a level and degree of maneuverability that you know classical toys just don't have. We live and breathe the startup life. We move fast. Every single team member really has contributed to make this happen and we've moved rapidly to get to where we are right now and then we're not going to stop. Our vision really is to get our technology into most toys so that toys are not only affordable, uh, and fun, but educational. You have to have a strong team of people. And this group has a strong team and has a vision beyond the initial technology that they have. So we're taking the best of what's available and then plugged Watson into it as far as being the brain. And we made something uh, just, just really, really awesome. And we give quantifiable results via the parent panel. So there's no smoke and mirrors. This gives parents access to insights of the communication between the toy and the child, uh, questions the child asks, and also interests, but also a deeper dive into analytics around the child and their learning behavior. So we're going to Kickstarter now, right before we launch our product to market, to really find out who our supporters are, to get market validation, to get feedback on the product and how we're building it, and really have a community build a product. Because we're really building a product for the consumers that has benefit for millions of children that's affordable, that reaches millions, and not just a few. Hi, I'm David. And I'm John. We run Super Mechanical. We spent the last couple years at the MIT Media Lab developing new technologies that connect objects and uh, humans in a more natural way. Unfortunately, developing new connected interfaces can be really difficult. So we created Twine to uh, make it easy. No matter whether you're a tech enthusiast, a DIY type, or a creative thinker, we all start on the same plane. You don't know how to program or to solder. Um, so really, Twine teaches objects how to speak, and you just have to tell them what to say. Twine is the simplest way to connect stuff to the internet. It's a durable two and a half inch square that listens to its environment and relays what it senses over Wi-Fi. It runs for months on batteries. Sensors to detect vibration and temperature are built in. You can also plug in other sensors, like a moisture sensor or a magnetic switch. If you're more adventurous, you can plug in your own analog or digital inputs with the breakout board. Twine can tell you what your sensors are saying using SMS, Twitter, and email. Or for more control, hook it into your code with HTTP. This is the web app that lets you tell Twine what to do. It's tightly integrated with the hardware, so you can see your Twine shows up along with the built-in accelerometer and temperature sensors. Uh, now, if you want to plug in an external sensor, like this easy button, you just take your twine, plug it in like this, the button shows up immediately, and even cooler, it's live. So you can see your sensors responding to stimuli. Uh, now, this allows you to set up your twine with no programming. It's a rules-based interface, simple language. So you can say, when button one goes down, then text. Turn on the AC in here. If you want to do something more complicated, like tie in the temperature sensor, then you add a filter. And let's say I want to say when temperature is also below, no, above 72 degrees. So now, when button goes down while temperature is above 72 degrees, then text, turn on the AC in here. You know the internet, right? There's a website for almost everything. It has changed the way you communicate. And for anything you could think of, there's a way to search for it. All of a sudden, you have the world in your pocket. And you want to extend that magic into everything that surrounds you. Because you know that when you do, amazing things will happen. That's the Internet of Things. And with the Wi-Fi, 
it's as easy as it sounds. Hi, I'm Daniel. Hi, I'm Tim. And we're in the Netherlands, modeling the Python in the first Wi-Fi standard. And we have been busy for the last year building something really amazing, the Wi-Fi. The concept of the Internet of Things is quite cool, but making it happen requires a strong knowledge in electronics and experience with wireless stuff. That's for the hardware side of the story. When it comes to the software, then you need complex development tools, some serious C and C++ ninja skills, and a lot of time spent writing and debugging tons of lines of code. The Wi-Fi takes the wireless freedom of Wi-Fi and combines it with the power, flexibility and ease of use of Python. We designed the Wi-Fi from the ground up with one goal in mind. Let's make IoT developing fun! The core of the software running in the Wi-Fi is MicroPython, a lean and mean implementation of Python 3 specifically optimized in terms of speed and memory to be able to run efficiently on a microcontroller. The hardware is also top-notch, combining a Cortex-M4 with a state-of-the-art Wi-Fi network processor. The Wi-Fi is all about openness and freedom. The whole software has been open source in the beginning, and it will always be. And when this campaign gets funded, we will make the hardware open source as well. Forget about needing cloud servers to download your software to it or special tools to compile your code before you can run it on the hardware. The Wi-Fi executes your Python scripts in real time. There are no strings attached, really. The only limit is your imagination. What you do with the Wi-Fi, it's completely up to you. Developing with the Wi-Fi, it's a piece of cake. You just need a breadboard, the Wi-Fi itself, and a power source. That's it, you're online. From that point on, you can connect to the Wi-Fi Stellnet server and start hacking right away using the Python interactive shell. Once your code is ready to go live, you log into the FTP server and upload it. The Wi-Fi has it all, but with great power comes great responsibility, so we have built a beautiful and intuitive Python API that exposes every feature of the hardware.